Challenge of the day, how to model a bottle thread in Fusion 360. Why not? Let's go. Hi everyone, and thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Just an attempt to add a little bit more value to your Fusion 360 experience. Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't, it's all good. And don't forget, in the comments area below, in the description area, you will find my email address, lastarschristiansen at autodesk.com. Any future topics you would like to see, I would love to hear about it. Today came from Najib, who sent me an email and said, hey, how to model a bottle thread inside of Fusion 360. And that though that I'm not a plastic engineer, and hopefully there's somebody uh, watching right now who will be more than helpful and share some more knowledge down the description area. Here's my attempt to do it inside of Fusion 360. We are actually going to start um, doing a little bit of a data collection because threads can be extremely technical um, with all the different dimensions. So you really need to make sure that you know what kind of thread you're looking to do. Um, you will see here that I found on United States Plastic Corporation, they had a wonderful website. Thank you so much for this company for sharing uh, some different data in here when it comes to threads. And I have to even admit that this here is not quite enough for me to be 100% sure that the thread that I'm going to model up are going to be perfect. But hey, let's uh, let's take a whack at it anyways. I was thinking that um, we will model up what they call in a series of a 415 style now to um my friends around europe and the rest of the world sorry i'm gonna have to do this in inches so inside of fusion i am going to uh, start out by switching our document settings here from our standard metric over to uh inches like this and uh, i'm actually gonna draw up kind of like the the inner bottle shape first and again i'm kind of like gonna go back and forth and refer out of this table here for this uh, 415. So you would like see that I, for example, is what kind of resembles um, the the sizes in here um, for for doing something something like this in the eight value. Um, so I'm gonna start out by creating a new sketch. I'm gonna select this face right here, and I'm just gonna draw a uh, a rectangle out. And I'm going to make this one 0.47 and the length of this, I'm going to make uh, 0 0.661 like this. This is kind of going to resemble the, the, the inner size of the thread, I guess is the best way to say this. Uh, so I'm going to revolve this around this axis right here. All right. So in this sense, we could kind of like maybe do something like a shell command just to uh, make that a little bit more obvious. Select the top and the bottom and we could give this some kind of a, uh, you know, hole through here. We're going to be, of course, be working on uh, on the outside for the bottom front. Hope you can follow me so far. All right. One thing I wanted to point out, and again, I'm not going to say that I'm a plastic engineer. I'm not the, the smartest guy in, in when it comes to this. But if you're looking at the S value here on this drawing, there's a little bit of an offset uh, coming down for that. So you're going to have to go over and find the S value over here. And I'm going to do this uh, 24, this one right right here. So I'm going to do like a 60 thousands uh, down. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to make an offset plane from the top here and just make sure that that goes minus that 60,000 minus 0 0.06. That is actually where my thread's going to start a little bit down the, the bottom. So this is all, you know, again, important when you're creating this yourself that you actually have the right the right data. Don't go necessarily from what I'm going to do here. Now, this is going to be a custom thread. I'm going to show you something that I think is a pretty neat trick to be able to do this inside of Fusion. Um, what I'm going to do, because I need a helix for this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go in to the create drop down and you can create what is called a coil. I'm going to click coil and I'm going to start a sketch on that um, face that I, I had before. I'm going to just go to the top view so we can look there. 
And I'm going to just draw out to, to make sure that I'm hitting that outer edge where our fret's going to start. Now, when I do that and I click, you will see that Fusion automatically starts creating um, this coil <laughs> type right here. Um, and you have all different kinds of settings. You've never seen this before. You know, it can be maybe a little bit overwhelming. We're going to do it together. So um, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this to an external triangular shape. Um, I'm not going to make it a cut. I'm actually going to make it a, 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 a new body uh, here. And there's a lot of different things to, to adjust. So it's kind of like just play around, slow down. It's all good. I'm going to change this to like 0 0.05. This really doesn't matter right now. There's nothing I've changed. Whoops, I hit enter. There's nothing I've changed yet. Edit it again. Uh, that, that really matters. But what kind of matter is I know I need two revolutions. Okay. And, uh, and then if I, you will see that there's an arrow here. I can kind of like draw up and down uh, for this, um, this triangle. I'm going to make sure that it's on the outside too. So this triangle is kind of sitting on the outside as its separate body. Now, when I go back, this is something not to confuse anybody in, um, in Europe or others in the world. When you're using frets inside of a, an English American frets, standard frets, um, you do it thread per inch. So you actually count how many um, threads you will have on an inch length. That's the way it's done over here. So in my case here, um, I know I need eight threads per inch. Um, what means that I actually, um, so that will mean eight revolutions, eight threads over one inch. Okay, that that's kind of like the, the length of this. But of course, I only want two. So now you can do some math. Uh, so I only need two. That means that this will be minus 0.25. Because if you did uh, 0.25 four more times, that will be one, eight revolutions over an inch. That makes sense? All right. It's the data I'm going to go with here. Bear with me, man. Uh, now, I'm, I'm using this as a new body because this helix that I'm creating right now is kind of like a dummy uh, model. Uh, I'm going to hit OK to that uh, so you can see that. And you'll see we have two bodies now. We have kind of like our flask diameter, and then we have this body here as our, our thread. And the reason that I'm going to do that is I'm going to use a command that I talked in a, recently in a video called include 3D geometry uh, when I did the pre project one. Check this out. This, hope that this doesn't get too confusing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hide my main body here for a second. I'm going to create a new sketch. And uh, I'm going to create that sketch on this plane here. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to say project include 3D geometry. And then I'm going to select right on that sharp edge on uh, on that, that helix there. And uh, what I will get is a 3D sketch. Let me set stop sketch. And let me hide that second body. What I now got is I got the path, the helix, for my, my custom bottle threat. So the coil we created, this bottom number two, it's really just a dummy one I created with the right data so I can extract that helix out of there. Oh, this somewhat makes sense. I turn my body one back on, and you can kind of see that that helix is sitting right there. Now I can draw up my my bottle thread. Now this is where I gotta admit that I didn't find on this website here. I couldn't extract exactly what the geometry for this bottle thread is gonna look like. And again, when it comes to threads, uh, make sure you get your data correctly. Don't use mine. So I'm actually just going to come up with my own, but I think that Jeep that, you know, I think you got it now. So I'm going to go ahead and create another sketch on that same plane where I created the helix. Okay. So there's the helix there. And uh, I'm actually going to draw up uh, just to, uh, to make my life a little bit easier. I'm going to draw up kind of what I think is going to be about my threat geometry, something that looks maybe like this out to the side. If you follow me, you know that I like to do something like this. I'm going to make this 0 0.5, no, 0 0.05. 
and I'm gonna make this here 0.04 I think is good uh, I think I'm gonna add a couple of fillets many times there's fillets on these things and again I beg you get your right thread data I'm gonna hit alpha line and uh, I'm gonna draw a line from here down to here I'm gonna make that sound like that um, and uh, then I probably need to let's go ahead and make a relationship between that that point right there and this point so it comes in there um, and now I'm just gonna grab something and try to see if I can figure out why this is not fully defined we got this here that should be the same as this here do I really need a dimension there there we go now it's fully defined so what I have now is I have two sketches I have the first sketch that's the helix I got the second sketch that's going to be your bottle thread geometry and now if we're going to use our good old sweep command we can select this here and this here in profile one and the path is going to be that helix we created and it's going to come here and that's actually not going to be a cut it's going to be a join like that and that is interesting notice how it actually has twisted there must be something in that helix that makes it twist so here it's normal Huh. and this is rotated but you can actually tweak this let me try this 10 degrees let it think let it think let it think I didn't like 10 degrees let's try something's not right here There you go, 30 degrees, and it actually, so it, there's something in this, there's something here that makes, whoops, that was me. Um, there's something in there that makes that twist. I'm not sure what it is, but we go back and edit this feature. You will see that I've had a 30 degree twist angle in there, then it looks right. I think it's right. I'm gonna go with this. Um, I should probably get with somebody on the development team and uh, troubleshoot that a little bit more. But I think that this is, I'm pretty convinced that this is good. Um, so um, what I'm gonna do now is, this is actually uh, now one body, right? We still have that, that body number two in there. We can right click here if we wanted to and remove this body because we don't really need it anymore. So right click, we can remove it. It was down in the timeline. Um, the last thing I'm going to do on this one is, is another little neat trick. I'm actually going to go in. I'm going to create a new sketch on this face here. And then I'm going to hit P for project. And uh, I'm actually going to project the whole face on that sketch. And then you can actually go in here and do a revolve. Select that geometry. And the X is going to be that little line in there. And uh, if we do it to a join command, you will actually see that it's going to join in and kind of create that blend there for the command there. And we can do the same thing uh, down here. Create a sketch on this face. P for project. Borrow that edge right there. And then we can go in and do a revolve uh, around that edge there. Make that a join. And I think that that is good there. All right. I think I'm not quite sure. I don't think that one is, is twisting. Maybe I have to do some investigation on that one. But this here, I think, is a pretty cool way to be able to create uh, custom frets where you can completely control the helix and uh, and everything else in there. So. With this, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If this was good stuff, thumbs up. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. And as always, I truly appreciate all your comments down in the description area. 
Until the next time, I hope you have an awesome, awesome day. Take care, folks. Thank you.